This is the fourth video of personal investment management session. In this video, we are going to discuss about profitability or return. What is profitability? Profitability is the money that a firm or business entity can provide for the resources utilized. It's the capacity of the firm to make benefits from its business operations. Uh, it's a measure of operating efficiency, profit and accounting concept, and, uh, and in economics, it's entirely different. Profit has got a different meaning. It's, a, it's a, based on accounting concept. It is revenue minus cost. Based on economic sense, it is inclusive. It's a reward for entrepreneurial organizational skills. Uh, in economics, profit has got a different meaning. Then, in economics, there are two costs. One cost is called explicit cost, the cost of uh, labor, cost of materials, and cost of overhead, which has been paid directly out of pocket, explicit cost. Then, there are some other costs which are called implicit cost. Implicit costs are imputed cost, which is not paid, but it is an opportunity cost in the sense cost of next best alternative for cost. For example, uh, when you say rent, uh, if the building is owned by the owner, the rent you would have paid. Otherwise, if you had uh, rented out, you'd, if you had rented out, you would have got some amount. So that is called opportunity cost. So in economics, profit is revenue minus explicit cost minus implicit cost. In accounting, profit is revenue minus just explicit cost. Uh, profit is a useful internal resource. Now, the profitability is the capacity or ability of the firm to generate income from its operations. When I say ability, it is different from absolute profit. How it is different from absolute profit, which I am going to explain through an example. For example, in your class there are three students. Let's say Akash, A student called Akash, B students called Balram, C Chandrasekhar. Akash, Balram and Chandrasekhar are the students studying in class 3rd BCom. Akash uh, scored 60 marks in a subject. Balram also scored 60 marks and the last one Chandrasekhar also scored 60 marks. So put together all three students are equal scorers and who is good? So we cannot be able to determine who is good. All are, all are equal and all are uh, A is Akash is as good as Balram, Balram is as good as Chandrasekhar. So we cannot come to a conclusion who is good. So this is one way. This is absolute profit also, something like that. Now, let's look into some more facts and bring in some information here. Let's say the student A, that is Akash, just works one hour in a day to get that 60 marks. And students B, Chandrasekhar, who works two hours to get those 60 marks. And student C, Chandrasekhar, Study, studies three hours or works three hours to score those 60 marks. Now you can able to judge that Mr. Chandrasekhar has utilized his full capacity. Three hours of studies he has utilized. Mr. Balram has just worked two hours to score those and Mr. Akash has just scored one hour. That means had Akash worked for two more hours, he would have scored more. That means this is the ability, profitability, in the sense, the first one, talk about just 60 mark scoring without looking at another information is profit, inform it's like profit. Profitability is the ability to generate future income, ability to generate uh, best out of operation. So this man Akash, if he had scored, he had good potential to score more marks compared to others because he has, his input is less than, uh, less than rest of them. So this is how profitability measure. Uh, what are the factors which influence profitability? Number one, size and volume of operations of an organization. Uh, there are some organizations which are multi, 
multinational organization or big so big organization whose budget is much more than the budget of state governments or central government governments itself like um, united states of america some the leading multinational uh, operations are spread across the globe so these are the large organization it can spread what is the advantage it can spread over its fixed cost over large number of units they produce large number of units so that per unit cost uh, their fixed expenses are spread over large number of units so they get they get learning curve advantage as well and such organization can use technology better they can develop services of expert personnel as well for example let's say uh, you know ticket issue vending machine so ticket issue machine if a company is a bus transportation company which is run by private individual who has got only one bus that he cannot uh, have this easily because he has to spend a lot of money for that but whereas government of karnataka ksrtc can do anything because they can introduce technology better because they have large fleet of buses so their technology they can use better so whereas these people technology if they start to use this will be not uh, working for them because they it involves a lot of huge fixed cost which cannot be spread over large number of units so that is the size and volume of operation for organization number 2 capital adequacy the organization especially banks and financial institutions are required to maintain certain level of capital to meet the statutory requirement to mitigate risk that means they have to maintain a minimum capital which event of problems event of certain run on the bank they should have safe money that is some portion of their capital should be kept in any situation so that is called capital adequacy international organization called basel fixes norms basel 1 basel 2 basel 3 norms are there right now which uh, we are not going to discuss at this point in time maybe you will be studying that in the next level uh next is liquidity the organizations like banks and financial institutions have adhere, have to adhere certain norms fixed by regulator so banks are uh, controlled and run by the regulations of uh, regulatory authority reserve bank of india they are required to keep a portion of their cash with the reserve bank of india as cash reserve ratio some portion maybe 4 or 5% of their total amount of uh, you know money cash in hand at this be kept with the reserve bank of india uh, deposits cash in hand means deposits from the, the savings banks account and other correct account that deposit has to be kept by some percentage they are required to adhere to certain statutory liquidity ratio wherein they have to uh, you know keep in the form of certain liquid assets they the banks also uh, give loan under priority sector in the sense there are a lot of uh, areas which uh, the central government or through reserve bank of india ask the people as the banks to give loan at a priority basis to certain sector like agriculture like uh, weaker section of the population like uh, uh, you know rural artisans etc so this is priority sector lending all these put together dents their profitability as they are constrained from investing profit let's say Uh, an individual depositor goes in by investing bank rupees 100 out of this rupees 5 5% has to be kept in reserve bank of it immediately so the left amount is 95 rupees and then again that out of 95 rupees they have to keep 25% of the total amount that is 25 rupees to 35 rupees uh, in uh, through slr so 100 rupees out of that 5 rupees is gone the remaining is uh, you know uh, 25 here it is gone so remaining is 70 out of that remaining 70 the government has to give loans to weaker sections and uh, some kind of loan which uh, doesn't pay them or sometimes there is a possibility of uh, npas of this loan so the banks uh, so this is what uh, all these things then left out amount is less maybe 100 rupees is there 50 rupees only it is available with the bank out of this 50 rupees they have to you know manage the rest of the fair so they cannot get a, a profit because unless they give loan to the people who are able to pay back properly then the profitability of the banks will be less so this is how you know i'm talking about banks how the liquidity is an important thing i mean liquidity is good but 
the liquidity may impact profitability. The more the liquidity, lesser will be the profit profitability sometimes. So this is what the problem is. Now again, agency problem. Uh, uh, sometimes the corporate sectors, the corporations are run by uh, paid professionals or what you call professional managers who are not the owners. May be owners, but uh, need not be owners. But owners are the large chunk of people who spread across the nooks and corners of the country. So they may not be knowing the what is happening inside the company. So inside the company, uh, the controlling the company is none other than these professionals. But there is a possibility that these professionals might work against company instead of supporting company's wealth creation, wealth maximization. They may turn to maximize their own earnings or their own profits or they may think of increasing their perks and other things. So this is what they are working sometimes against the interest of company but personal interest. This is called agency problem. This will have affect the profitability of the company because invest they may not think of these things. Instead they will be looking about their own personal agenda. Then credit risk indicator. Credit risk arise due to the inability of borrowers in repayment of principal amounts as well as, well as interest. Sometimes borrowers may not able to pay in time and some, uh, you know, even interest payments or regular periodic payments, they are not able to pay the installments. Uh, there are credit agents, rate agencies which rate the credit or the of the organizations like Chrysler, like uh, Moody's International Level, all these they will uh, rate. So uh, the good rating is good for the company and bad rating is good. Operational efficiency and efficient Organization maintain a very good operating ratios. Operating ratio means a ratio between operating expenses and and then the sales. You know, very good percentage if they maintain, it's a good thing. An efficient costing system, which with the material cost, labor cost, and overhead control, will be uh, you know only way of uh, impo improving your operational performance is to reduce the cost. Uh, measures the profitability. There is one measure called return on investment, and the second measure return on asset. Return on investment is ratio between net profit and cost of investment. Gain from investment, that is profit from investment minus cost of investment divided by cost of investment will give you the return on investment or revenue minus cost of goods sold divided by cost of goods sold will give you the return on investment. Simple and easy to calculate. So this is all about profitability of an organization. Thank you.